right, the Cloud Access Security Broker section is kind of cool if you aren't already familiar with a CASB. That's uh, oftentimes what you'll hear this being referred to as. So when I'm saying CASB, that doesn't mean Cosby. <laughs> so essentially, we are sure we're protecting users, data applications, um, but basically without this, you need uh, your read-only access um, to basically monitor your network and endpoint security and, and be able to provide um, your protection. But it doesn't always allow you to be able to protect against things that might originate from your SaaS. Um, so there's sometimes a lack of visibility and control with, um, with our SaaS applications. So it's much more difficult to be able to prevent end users from being able to access their applications from um, unauthorized devices, right? Can they get access to their Gmail from their personal PCs or their phones? Of course, right? So, you know, we're looking at possibly 10 different security vendors to be able to protect these assets, right? And they give all different examples and, and numbers in the course, but um, <clears throat> the more uh, complexity eventually gets added on with the more capabilities that we have. So rather than trying to secure the endpoint, what we're trying to do is we're trying to secure the cloud, all right? So we have some on-prem or off-prem, we have some cloud, and then this is kind of where CAS B falls into place. We have management and policies that traverse our CASP, and this is also where we can have visibility and compliance and all that good stuff. So sometimes um, when we look at the different flavors or the different ways that we can deploy um, CASB, basically we have inline forwarding and inline reverse. Okay, so the inline forwarding proxy is essentially going to sit a little bit um, closer to the end user. All right, and then um, when we have services that the user is going to initiate, right, we um, are basically initiating those connections to the resource and, and we're closer to, to that user. So, I mean, there's pros and cons to both of these. The downfall is that um, it could cause problems within our data path. There could be um, a limited nature um, of support. Like when we look at any cloud to cloud type communication, we, we aren't gonna see any support for that. Um, where in line reverse proxying is usually located on the front side of the resource that's being accessed. And then all of um, the, 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 the services are secured when the user connects to the resource. So proxying before the public internet versus um, within the, the public internet. All right, we also have out of band CASP. Um, these are solutions that are outside of the user's cloud apps um, and Technically, we also have two main flavors of this, all right? We have either API calls that can be exchanged or log data that can be exchanged. Now, sometimes that log data is a little bit slower. Um, <clears throat> and when we look at um, things that it might require, maybe it requires that SIM. So, you know, there's, you know, pros and cons to, again, the, the different sort of renditions. Um, generally, the APIs are going to allow the CAS solution to directly control the, the cloud um, applications. So what does this lead us to? This leads us to Cisco's CloudLock. So this is technically considered out of band and it uses those APIs. All right? And um, if any of you are curious as far as what is supported, um, there's a list of approved vendors on Cisco's website. Okay, so we can look at things like user accounts, uh, who's doing what in our cloud applications. We can be able to detect 
any type of uh, malicious insiders or um, how do we even detect if an account is compromised, right? And we'll, we'll look at some examples of this a little later. Um, do we have any toxic data? Is everything being shared appropriately or anything inappropriately being shared? Um, how do I monitor my app and its usage and all of its risk? Um, how do I revoke any risky apps? So one of the examples that uh, we'll actually take a look at a little bit later is um, an environment where we have internal employees, but we also have contractors and those resources are all being shared in the cloud. So how can we set up an alert if somebody is potentially maybe sharing an account number in the wrong folder or maybe in the wrong app? So, you know, this is certainly something that, you know, we can see a lot of organizations being able to utilize today. <coughs> Excuse me. So, as far as, um, you know, just some examples of, um, you know, proxy-based and all this good stuff, right? In, 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 in contrast, I should say to, to proxy-based CASPs, CloudLock actually doesn't need to be in line. So um, it's a little bit more beneficial. You don't have to worry about sizing a proxy, maintaining a, a proxy rule set, you're basically just hooking in those APIs to be able to monitor events and to be able to push down your policies. So there are going to actually be a mix of policies. Um, some of them are predefined. They can either be automatically activated or they can be inactive and on standby waiting to be enabled later. Um, of course, you can always go in and configure your own policies as well. Um, but some of the predefined policies do um, just have a little bit of a higher percentage as far as um, true positives and, and making sure that the incidents are, are actually accurate. Um, and again, here's um, maybe an example of integrating something like Cisco CloudLock with Google+. Plus. So uh, they, you know, as you're going through the courseware, they give you some other um, examples too. But essentially what we're trying to do is you know, lock down those user accounts and ensure that um, we're monitoring, you know, where they're going, what it is that they're doing. Um, you know, are they accessing Salesforce in the U.S. or should be, should they be, should they be doing, um, you know, exporting of data out of um, specific countries, so on and so forth, all right? Um, as far as the example that they give us here, where there's a firm with all of the internal employees or the internal teams, um, but we also have maybe, um, let's say, an external contractor for a particular project, um, maybe if the um, outside consultants or um, whoever it is begins uploading confidential, confidential data, um, it's obviously very important for that data to be secured. So CloudLock can notify either, you know, internal engineers or the, you know, IT team if that document needs any additional security. Um, if it doesn't or if it does, what additional steps is it that we're going to be taking? Um, they also give some examples in the courseware about uploading account numbers into like a Slack group and sending a notification for that. So, you know, securing cloud apps can, um, you know, certainly be complex, but the additional layers of security that we add will certainly um, address some of these concerns, right? So CloudLock can also tie into OAuth, which we touched on a little bit earlier. Remember, that's where we were presented an applet. So if we were using Office 365 um, credentials, we could hook that in just, again, for, for an additional layer of security. 